but when I walk around the Mall of America, last thing I think about is that it might be haunted. In fact, I never thought about it once. But employees at the mall's Sea Life Aquarium have really reported hearing and seeing strange things while closing at night. Well, our psychic, Jody Levon, and ghost hunter Dave Schrader investigated. Hey, Dave. Yes, Jody. I'm afraid of ghosts. Well, that's okay, because I'm terrified of aquariums. Why are we here? Well, actually, it's a, a pretty interesting story. Of all places, you'd think this would be the least haunted in the world. But actually, the employees here have been having all kinds of paranormal activity, from the sounds of children running around and giggling to uh, voices calling out their names as they're walking through at night. So it seems like there's a hotbed of paranormal activity coming to the aquarium. A lot of it actually stems from um, a little girl that they believe is here at the aquarium. Do you think that these employees are talking to each other and sort of making it up in their own minds because it's, it's interesting, or is it unrelated? Are they telling the same story from a different perspective? It's coming from all different sides of the aquarium, different employees throughout different periods of time, all sorts of things. So Megan, can you explain to us a little bit about this room? Uh, I had a chance to come in here with you earlier, and again, I said I'm not a psychic or sensitive, but this place set my spidey sense off. Yeah, this is the adventure room. It's one of the classrooms that we have here at the aquarium. It's like the floodgates are opening here. So I, I, I feel this little girl's energy. I feel her hair. She really liked having shiny hair. It looks like it's darker hair. She has it in a ponytail. She's got a very um, little voice. It's high pitched. Accident. She keeps talking about an accident. Well, there was a young girl back in 1998 who died on the, what was the Screaming Yellow Eagle back at Camp Snoopy of a heart attack. Was she, was she older than seven? I believe she was eight. When we came through earlier with Megan, one of the things that drew me, like I said, I, my head was buzzing. I just felt weird. Now, I'm not a psychic or a sensitive, but I was immediately drawn back behind the whiteboard and the palm tree that was there moved. If you come back and look, there's all kinds of great stuffed animals and toys and books, but it felt very like, uh, like a very shy energy just kind of hiding out back here. This is a tool that's uh, been pretty popular in the paranormal investigating field, a radio that's been modified. Um, it'll run through all the, the stations. It doesn't stop on any one station. And what's great down here is we get no radio, radio signal at all. So if any voices come through here, there's a good chance that it might be something uh, communicating with us. I'm going to Turn this on for just a second since Jody's picking up this little girl's spirit down here and I'm definitely picking up a cold breeze in this area. I'm going to just run this and record uh, just for a few moments and see if maybe we can get her to come out and talk. This is Dave and Jody and we're in the adventure room and we're sensing that there's a little girl down here. Can you tell me your name? Do you like to stay down here by all the stuffed animals and the books? Do you like when there are other kids in this room? Is it fun to play with them and watch them have fun? Okay, I'm gonna play this back. Maybe we can hear your voice. Do you have anything else you might wanna say to us? Did you hear that? So the question that I asked was, do you like to stay down here with all the stuffed animals in the books? And you hear this voice come through and say, yes. What's interesting is I, I heard her answer at least two to three times and it's the same yes, the same voice, and it comes right after a question. And then it doesn't come any other time during the recording. So that would lead me to believe that it, it's some form of intelligent haunting here. Now we do have to be careful because there's a thing called pareidolia. That's where we force our brains to hear things or see things uh, out of random patterns. Now what I like about this is there's no radio voices coming through on this radio. We're just getting straight static. So. That's a little bit more intriguing. I'm interested to see what happens in the rest of the aquarium. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna run the radio again here and uh, do some recording. We're gonna try to get some EVP work because we're actually physically hearing DVP, disembodied voice phenomena, from the tunnels. Did you hear that? No. I heard someone laughing. Something. No, I heard somebody laughing. Okay, this door was not open. <laughs> this door wasn't open when we came down here. I told you I heard somebody walking around. I know there was something moving around back in here. And there's nothing that anyone would need to hear at this time. There's, there shouldn't be anyone else here. There's nothing that... Dave, tell us what we just found. Well, as we're walking through here, down at the end of the tunnel where I was... Uh, 
feeling that there was somebody walking around back here and thought I saw a gentleman I brought up uh, uh, to Jody a few seconds ago. Nate just walked us down to find that the door that we passed earlier that was closed is now wide open. And this is not a lightweight door. This is a good heavy door. And Nate was just informing us that this door shouldn't be open and there's nothing in there that anybody would need right now. A lot of times we find that in hauntings, people are not going to like this, but some of the places they do like to hang out are the closet. So there is something to that myth of there's something in my closet. Here we are. We've just entered the Minnesota North Woods part at the aquarium. And there's been a lot of tales that have happened over here. A lot of the different employees have shared these stories. They've heard their name called out or they've seen a shadow of a little girl. It is more humid in here and I want to compare the feeling that I'm getting to that humidity. The second we stepped into this area, I felt a tremendous amount of heaviness. But what is intriguing, when we came through earlier in the walkthrough, uh, like I said, when Megan walked us through and told me the tales, I followed you along and as soon as we got to this spot, you stopped to tell me that you were picking up this energy and right in this exact area is where Nate just told us and Megan told well, us earlier. Well, and we just stopped here again. Right. This is where I stopped again. There's definitely stuff in here. So here we are, Jody. We made it through. We're at the end of the tour. I got to tell you, I came in with a lot of skepticism, but I had no idea that it was going to be this active. That was crazy. I mean, we've only been here a short time. We heard things. We saw things moving around. We heard disembodied voices. It's loaded, and it's fun because nobody's ever been heard here. It's, if there's still a peacefulness about it, I had a great time. And you're right, usually I don't like this, but it was really a nice, it's a nice place to be. What do you think? I mean, what do you say about that? I, I guess know. you can believe whatever you want to believe, but it's it, one of those things like you feel like you got to be there. I mean, those are two people that we know, yeah. that we trust. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know Dave, 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 if you see all those national shows as you flip through cable tonight, Dave's on those shows. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the top ghost hunters in the country. He's one of the guys, yeah. and they went to to check it out. I think what was interesting is to see that you, one would think that those sorts of the door being open or hearing someone laughing would be sort of creepy, mm -hmm. but they were just okay with it. Mm -hmm. so. Interesting stuff.